folks, here's one that's gonna get a few people's knickers in a knot. I personally love my 2Js. I've got a couple of Supras. I also love RBs because um, we've got a couple of R32 GDRs as well. But the 2J does have some advantages over the RB. And there's a couple of advantages of the RB over the 2J as well. So behind me right here is a hybrid block between 2J and RB. So it's going to get people pretty confused. It's taking the best components of a 2J and the best components of an RB. So we've actually got, on, on a 2J, the bores are a lot closer together than on an RB. But the bearing sizes and the crank is a lot stronger. So these guys at Bullet Engineering behind me, they've actually created the best of both worlds with this Frankenstein motor. And we're going to go and have a chat to Darren, the man behind this, about this little creation of his. G'day Darren, how you going? Good. Uh, you are the man behind this Frankenstein sort of build here. This is uh, a little bit unique. It's going to have people arguing with each other. Yeah, maybe. What have you done? What have you done? Well, what we've done here is um, we've taken the uh, the RB block. Uh, we've removed the water jackets, and um, so this is this has been specifically designed for the uh, the Pro Turbo Pro Mod Drag Extreme uh, scene. So uh, what we're hoping is uh, by the modifications we've done with this, uh, we're going to have an RB block going head to head with the 2J for import world record. So if you, if you first thing you'll notice is um, we've added four bolt mains on the ends. Um, that's that's probably just a luxury, but we have we pulled these main uh, these where the bolts seat, we've pulled that area down and the cap down because we've increased the size of this main tunnel by approximately seven millimetres in diameter, which uh, fits the 2J main bearing. The Toyota 2J main bearing is about seven millimetres bigger than the, than the RB. So that's one of the 2J's main advantages is the crank side of things, isn't it? Yeah, so the crank shafts uh, is uh, much beefier than the one in the, uh, the RB and so what happens with with that is you're getting torsional twist in the crankshaft as it rotates and um, of course it takes energy to do that and that's energy that's not getting to the back wheels. So we thought what we would do is um, the, the 2J bearing was a good fit, the diameter, uh, the width of the bearing was very similar to the RB, um, you know obviously you buy them in a set for seven journals the same as what we needed rather than going with a V8 bearing that was a similar size. So we went with the 2J, uh, we moved the, the stud pattern outwards to allow for the bigger hole. Um, and then what we've had done is we've teamed up with uh, Cali's crankshafts in the United States. And um, we've, we've uh, liaised with their engineers and come up with uh, this new crankshaft to suit. So what we've done there is obviously we've got a 2J main shaft in there now, uh, size. Of course, all the spacing is the same as RB because of that has to fit an RB bore spacing on the block. Um, and we put a Honda uh, big end. I oh, know, uh, it's a combination of Honda, Toyota and It is, it? it is. That'll get people really riled up. Yes, well, some of the, um, the, the Toyota, the 2J stuff now running in, in Pro Turbo has the Honda journal on it already. The reason we go with this is because we're limited on the bore, with the bore size is smaller, the conrod can only be a certain width because it has to go down the bore before you, um, when you assemble the engine. So by going to the smaller big end pin, uh, that gives us more material in the conrod to, uh, uh, more material around the rod bolts uh, to give us more strength in the conrod, especially with the aluminium rods, you want a lot of material around there for the extra strength. And in addition to that, we fixed up the snout so that the RB snout is quite uh, small in diameter and it's and it's a little bit short. So what you have is you have an issue where the, the balancer only has 19 millimetres of purchase on the end of the snout and, and also with it being a small diameter, they have a small keyway in it. And uh, this cross section at the front here becomes quite thin because of the size of the balancer bolt hole and the outside diameter, this, this is quite thin. So what we've done here is we've um, extended the crank out for an extra 19 millimetres to double our purchase for the balancer. We put a 516 key in it. And so that's given us a lot more stability at the front. Um, and then at the rear, uh, we've increased the size of the flange diameter. 
and we've added two extra bolts. So instead of six bolts, we now have eight for the flywheel. So uh, basically, um, we've sort of tried to put all the features in that we need. And um, with all these added features, now uh, we're confident that this combination uh, can go head to head with the 2J combinations in, um, in the import scene. And uh, let's see if we can get the RB platform down into the fives and maybe take the world record. In your mind, the RB head is superior to the 2J head, so this is pretty much the perfect combination using the best bits of everything. Well, I think th there is some advantages with the RB engine, which is that the deck height is nine millimeters higher, which allows us to run a, a longer Conrod. And also we have a bit more bore spacing, uh, which means we can actually go out to an 89 millimeter bore. Yep. So we can actually go out to an 89 millimeter bore with these to increase the capacity, so. Okay, so a 2J, these are, are much closer together, are they? Yeah, so in a 2J, uh, you tested my memory, but I think in a 2J, we're at uh, 93 millimeter, yeah, we're 93 millimeter bore spacing, and RB is 96 and a half millimeters. So um, we, our limitation there is how much distance do we end up between here at our maximum bore? Especially with those high boost pressures, we want to have a minimum of five millimetres between the bores to allow for a, a decent amount of head gasket to ensure that we have a seal. Uh, what sort of power are you going to expect this uh, can uh, put out? Well, the, uh, the guys running uh, at the top of the field now would have to be making uh, around 3,200 horsepower to run the numbers they run. Um, so uh, we'd be expecting that uh, this engine will be able to produce that. And, uh, and maybe more. If people have the deep enough pockets, what are they going to be set back for, for something like this? So they're going to be about uh, 14,000 Australian dollars. Uh, and um, That's about 10 grand US. About that. And um, the crankshaft, the crankshafts will be about, um, I think around the 48, 4,800 US dollars. Hopefully we get to see some, uh, some of these on the track soon. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. It's um, two weeks away. Uh, we're expecting um, that uh, our first, the prototype, will be uh, at World Cup final. So barring any unforeseen circumstances, we're hoping, um, I don't want to dob him in, so I'm not going to say his name, but we'll keep an eye out from World Cup and, um, and hopefully he does some great things with it. Cool. Thanks very much for, for going through that with us. Thanks for having me. So there we have it, the age-old argument of 2J versus RB has just gotten a little bit more complicated. I mean, there we go, the 2J, you can see the, the narrower cross-section here versus that. And uh, all the die-hard Supra people and all the die-hard GDR people, you got your work cut out for you now. What do you think, 2J or RB or, or maybe this hybrid Frankenstein block?